<laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to see how esports is actually growing in Australia compared to at least when I was around. Yeah, so yeah, it's you'd uh, have one tournament once a year. Yes. Well, that was WCG, WCG right? WCG, Warcraft then, Three. Yep. That was yep. that was my jam as well. It's crazy. Here we go. We're into the game. Would you like to do the introductions for this player, Legionnaire? Uh, introducing in the eleven o'clock position, we have the defeater of Moonglade, <laughs> Hot, and the evil of Dark. Down in the bottom right corner, we have Seeda. Ooh. I like it. Beautifully done. So far, looks like the mirror match is a complete mirror, as you would expect. No shenanigans going on yet. No, nothing funky. I was expecting SCB oh, rushes. There we go. Second refinery early on for um, HUD, so more tech heavy build, more gas heavy build. Not a, uh, a wizard, so I can't actually predict what he's going to go beyond this. Well, I am probably the worst caster for a T vs T match. Don't I, say that. I know nothing. Well, let's I, just. I have a hard enough time trying to predict what Terran's doing when they're, they're playing against Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wh it's what do you normally see? Tell us. Why are you asking me, the Zerg player? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh,. The, the problem is TVT seems to, you know, flip-flop, uh, the meta of the TVT seems to flip-flop a lot based on the patch and the balance changes, and it has been a good year since I've really seen a TVT, I'd have to say. Well, maybe longer. I can't remember the last time I commentated, like, WCS, but, um... Is it still mech play, or has it moved to bio, is it still airplay, what? No idea. <sighs> okay, I wish this, I knew. This is going to be a wonderful cast. All right. Mech. Insano says, Mech, thank you, Insano. See, the, the caster should be doing the commentating. <laughs> commentating. And the, <laughs> the observer. Wait. The observer should be doing the commentating. Yes. yes. That's it. Oh, we got a little hidden away SCV in the bottom left from C there. Looking mm. for some shenanigans. What are we going to see? You think a uh, starport? I'd say starport. Mm, maybe just a scout. Late what? scout. Looking for that third base if there's a cheeky third. If you're going to do a starport, you probably would have done it a little bit higher than that anyway. Mm. Well, he's getting behind those mineral blinds, maybe he'll be doing one soon. Uh, maybe just keeping an eye out. It makes a lot of sense. Hellion to open things up. They're both going starport though. Is this back in the base? That's good scouting positioning by Hut. So I can see if there's any push across the map. Yeah. So it, it definitely is looking like the mech sort of style. You know, both of them... Well, one of them's producing marines, the other one... Straight into the Hellions. So we're seeing a... It's just swapping. Yeah, hot swap. So, since we can't talk about this game, because we know nothing, tell us about some of your glory days. Some of my glory days? What was your best tournament? Most fun tournament, not just best <sighs> succeeding. I'll, it, it's hard to, to differentiate them, you know. When you're winning a tournament, <laughs> it's it's kind of it ends up being the one that you love the most, you know. I gotta say, probably the first time we had WCS in Australia, you know, you remember this? You were there for it when we had the banners and fully decked out hall, and seems like a lot of money went into that. Mm -hmm. Never again, <laughs> but. That was probably the best one. I didn't win the Australian, but I won the Oceanic the next day. Um, you came second to pig? Didn't yeah, you? second yeah. to pig in the Australian one in a ZVZ, and then um, the next day, avenged that loss against pig, and then ended up proceeding to win the tournament. Yeah, that was really cool. It was really fun. What is that upgrade? That is concussive shells for the Marauders. Okay. So they're gonna have slow when they hit. So a little bit of cheeky play, he's got two of them in the medivac, so looks like he's going to be pinning things down and helping um, secure the kills. Looks like Seether's just... Oh, here we go. He's going straight in. Super aggressive. Really nice angles on the Marines, but just not enough damage there. Instantly deflected, really nicely done by Hut. He should circle around and go for the main now. Yeah, he's still got that medivac in play, and there wasn't too much any air, but... Uh, yeah, there we go. There you go, good call. Should have listened to me five seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, he could be there by now. 
Well, you know, these guys, they're still young spring chickens compared yeah. to us Legionnaires, yeah. so they're still figuring it out. That's right, they'll get there. One day. They'll One get day. There. Or not. <laughs> no, who knows? But then again, they're still in and we're not. Yeah, we can't really talk much about that. No. No, we can't say much about that. Uh, what was your what was your favorite tournament, Legionnaire? Uh, probably the first one that got me in onto the pro team over in Korea. So it wasn't really spoken about much. It was an amateur tournament, so none of the professionals could play in it. It was in Korea. There were 512 wow. plus players, so it was a huge bracket. That's insane. It was pretty big. Top eight ended up being casted on TV. Yeah. And so I made it through to the top eight, mm -hmm. and that was held the next week. Um, and because of that, I started playing practicing versus one of the pro teams that was there, mm. and became very good friends with them. And uh, after the tournament, they actually picked me up mm. because I was just on a, a small, very small sponsored team at that point in time. So. I'd say that was probably my favourite because without that I would have just been on a plane back to Australia and mm. I never would have achieved anything in Korea. Were you the only sort of foreigner in the top eight for that tournament? Yes, yes. Oh, um, I don't. I think I was the only foreigner in the tournament. Yeah. So I'll, there were a lot of uh, semi-professionals mm. that were in it. So there were a lot of uh, people in there. So yeah, I played in the top eight. Yeah. So he was going Kratos and then switched over to the last couple of seconds. <laughs> What? It, it was meant to be disallowed, but... Ah, uh, uh, that's horrible. Yeah, so a week of practice, and I got a different matchup than I was expecting. Oh, uh, well, that, that is time. so <laughs> sick. That's such a dirty move. So Hutt's putting pressure on here. He's coming in. <laughs> Shutting them down like that, uh, really opening up. He's stopping his name, destroying everything. Gonna wrap around with the SCVs, maybe. Just enough. And GG is cool. Hut winning wow. game one. Good push. Very good push. Nicely done. Ooh. Start of an upset. Yeah. Start of an upset, Legionnaire. Well, it's it's also that you can say that you're better than Seether. Yeah, he's doing yeah. it for me. Yeah. It's uh. We need Hut to win the tournament now. That's that way me. you're the second best. <laughs> that's how it works. The only one to take a game. Mm. I'm sure. Well, that was a bit of an upset. I thought uh, Seether was the higher ranked player. Are they both Grandmasters? I assume they uh, are. Well, on this account, Hutt's not. Um, I'm not sure about Seether, but um, generally Seether's been the guy that's made a lot more, uh, won a lot more in the scene. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's done really well in WCS, at least locally. I don't know about overseas. I haven't really been keeping up to that, up to date with that stuff, but... Um, yeah, he's been a really good player for a long time, but I think he also, uh, he's not always on. Like, he, he kind of gets distracted with other games, or like, you know, he's not 100% committed sometimes. At least I've heard that in the past, so. Yeah. Okay. What do you say his best matchup is? Best, worst? He's He's been really impressive in TVT. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like I, I remember the days when, like, C the vs. Igers was a, a big thing uh, in a lot of finals. Um, and, um, he would get the upper hand on Igos as well, so I always figured it was the TVT, but you'd probably have to ask him to find out what he thinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really impressive. Do we know what the second map is? No. I always used to really love World Cyber Games. Like, mm -hmm. each year, going there, seeing people, like, friends you've made from all different countries, yep. all coming together, and... Um, and you'd have, see have the same fun. people every year, yeah. year after year. It'd be the, or the, the top... Top of the top of each of each country that always turn up, that always win a turn up, and um, yeah, it was really just a great catch up. Like I used to love, uh, like a guy named Mist in uh, Warcraft Three, Brazilian guy. Mm -hmm. He was the funniest guy. Like he was so happy, just like just a really really entertaining guy. And I was so happy when I got to see him every year. And it was like there's tons of people like that from all these random countries. Even um, the New Zealand guy, Cowie, he was a cool guy. Ah, so many of them. So many of them I've forgotten as well. One of the biggest wins as well when I was over there was, um, yeah, I think it must have been in, it might have been in America, in like Seattle or something, when there was the World Cyber Games in Seattle. Beat Grubby in mm -hmm. my group stage. Yeah. He would that have been angry. 
Yeah, he was not happy. I, I kind of, he told me afterwards that I kind of wrecked his run because he like had this plan of how to get out of the group stage and, and align himself in like the top eight to get away from like Sky and stuff. And he so got you Sky. Beat him in the early brackets, did you? The round robin. I, I beat him in the round robin, and then he got Sky like right out of brackets, and he just like ruined his run. Yeah. Grubby's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, he's still around, man. He's um. Is he is he into StarCraft two or? No, he's not anymore. He started off as in the StarCraft two, but then he went to um, Hots. Oh, Here's the storm. Mm. For a long time, but that game's got canned. So uh, I don't know where he's doing. He's streaming something for sure. I'm not sure what though. Oh, Warcraft three. You know, reforges around the corner. Yep. I think he's back on that now. Okay. Yeah. They should be holding some more tournaments for that as well. I hope so. Yes, I'd like to win again. <laughs> Reverse positions this time. Hut down in the bottom right. See the top left. Yeah, we might have to change over the scenes here. There we go. Thank you very much too. And yeah, hut bottom right. See the top left. We are seeing a second refinery from both this time. See, I can't even say if this is more standard play or if this is both shenanigans. The thing is, the power of the commentator is you can create the story. So you can say, this is some dynamic play that we've oh never seen God. before. Koreans aren't even doing this yet. And you know, this is, this is like the Australian meta we're talking about. This is the... Now is three out check. of three on gas normal play? No. Oh my god, four and out of three. They're both It's crazy. They're, uh, they're playing out of their minds right now. Super conservative and dynamic. What do you think's going through Cedar's mind at the moment? He's, he's just lost his first game. Is he going to be more cautious or is he going to be more aggressive? I think he's going to be a little mad. Yep. He's going to be a little upset. He's How's like, he going to channel it? I think he channels it through focus. I think he focuses harder. He's not gonna he's not gonna sway, but he's not gonna play it around anymore. Oh see the no, he's probably just scouting again. Well, well maybe this maybe. is a cheeky spot. Don't make yeah. a liar out of me. You know, he's thinking about it. And what better way to secure a win than with a nice little cheese after your first win? That's very true. Scouting Reaper in an interesting spot. Do you mean for Hup? Uh, for Seether. He's just sitting oh, there. Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure... Oh, okay. It's the jump up. Never mind. Makes perfect sense. I have no idea. Explain it to me. Uh, basically, he could have uh, used the jetpack to go up that, that ramp, that little dip there. And so he was standing at the top of it so he couldn't do it. Okay. Or if he did do it, he'd get shots off before he got up there. Starport's ready. Click. Ooh. Ooh, instant liberator. Looking to liberate the mineral line. Very cheeky. Um, I wonder how Terran's effective it is. not going to have very much to stop that if they, they don't see it all. Yeah, well, looking at what Caesar can make right now, he's making his starboard, but it's still a, a little while away from um, finishing up here. The, the big benefit for him, though, is he's got his second command center up, so he can transfer quickly, and then he'll have a little bit of time to, mm. to try and counter before the second one turns up. Hmm. It's gonna get cheeky. It's a good position too. You can probably get the uh, the liberation zone in such a nice area that like any air can't get to you very easily unless it's coming from the air. And he's going for a tech lab as well, so it's gonna be a while before a Viking can get out. Although he's got a couple of the anti-air units that he can. The uh, cyclones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're gonna have to get in range for it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's cut him at up. the front. He has to clean back. He's going straight for the kills here, forcing the whole line to do it. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Four dead, five dead. Really nicely done there. And then no one's mining, so, you know, yep. times that by two at least. Yeah, to be a nice little zone here. There's no way the Marines are going to stop that. Yeah. Just out of range of Almost everything else. Suicide. Same time though. Front. Big trade off here. It's supposed to retreat. Target locked. Nine, Nine kills. kills. We'll take it out. So I think it paid for itself. I'd say so. His second command center, the part is uh, a little bit behind, but he's well ahead of it. He's trading back and forth. Cyclones, super annoying, just in general against everything. So there's no further harass. 
from the airport because he's lifted off and taken it to the top right. Okay. Uh, to oh. the middle right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Then we go all the way back home with it and starts to make ravens. Nope. That's not the other, the other player. He's just chilling there. Ravens from the other guy though. So see the going for the the bio tank raven sort of style. Needs to start things off here. Maybe looking for a timing when he's got a couple of ravens out, or just to secure that third base. Do Terrans do a lot of leapfrogging of tanks? Uh, or do they just move in big clumps and then... No, they usually leapfrog a bit. I guess it depends on what what race they're playing against and what kind of army they have to deal with, but... Uh, in TB2, it's probably big clumps. Get up close, siege before the enemy, get mm -hmm. get the positioning. It's all about, you know, line of sight to everything and... There you go, reap it down. Got a good scout off there. See this continuing to expand? I don't know if he was forced to play much more passively because of the early aggression or if this was his uh, plan all along. Hmm. Seems just to want to macro up and not do too much else. Yeah, I guess he, he th probably figured he had to play a bit of catch-up after losing that many SCVs, but it came at a price getting that Liberator out so early as well, so the trade-off is there. It's just about how much damage you could do. Um, they're still pretty neck-and-neck, neck, to be honest, just in yeah. almost all facets. Stim on the way for HUD. The Hellion Scout. Both players going for the Marine Tank. I'm still a little surprised with how, how little, in some ways, the progression of uh, scouting has happened in StarCraft 2. Like, I was expecting supply depots to be built everywhere around the map just mm. for, for different vision, so you can see when drops are coming and that sort of stuff, but I it never really took off. No. Like, even in Brood War, mm. like, you, you'd have probes everywhere around the map. Mm. They wouldn't be mining at all, you'd just have them there just for the early detection. Yeah. But, yeah. like, in, in this game, they, they've got a little bit of uh, map vision, but most of it is just build up large armies, push forward, hope for position. Mm. Yeah, they rely a lot on, like, scanning. A lot of scans. Oh. Wow, that was close. But I, I agree with you, too. Um, yeah, you think, considering it is TBT and it's tanks, it's, like, so important to know where the enemy is, where the tanks are, and uh, outraging them, or, like, being the first to set up a siege. This is super aggressive. There's a lot of Taurus going down. Thanks to Siege Cup. Look at these Vikings. These Vikings are going to hit the zone out here. Sort of uh, that much I have. I think he felt he was behind because he knew see they had that third expansion, so he had to go for it. But you're attacking at the, the strongest point on the map where. It's Particularly like on this map, bases. where you've only got the one ramp. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in a way he thought he had him. Like, he thought he had him out of position, so he's like, no, we'll die. But well, at the same time. Now, it's do or die. <laughs> apparently so. Those ravens really came into play big with dropping those turrets as well. These, yeah, those was, things do so much damage. It was very good reaction time. Mm. Beautiful tank line there. It's going to make it even harder for these guys to get in. Hut is just throwing caution to the wind here. I believe. Uh, I that to that believe. army count is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yep, with all those SUVs, it's, it's got to be. It's at least double supply. Yeah. Well, we go. Here we go. It's going to get real interesting. Not many Marines here. We'll see them, but it doesn't tire us to help out. SUVs coming in as well. It's gonna be enough to still four or five tanks up to see the smell of the ground. Great, great. That should be fun. GG. Well, 
There you go. That's TVT. Everyone's going to have to listen to us again for another <laughs> game we don't know the proper builds for. Hey, I think we're doing just fine. You know, we're doing just fine, Pete. Yeah. What's, yeah. What was your favorite WCG? Let's go back to nostalgia. It's one thing we do have. Probably 2002, I think. Was that Maybe Korea? it was 2003. No, I'm, I'm talking the Australian one. Oh, Australian. So I had moved down to Sydney mm -hmm. for a couple of months um, prior to it. Okay. And I was uh, working in the PC cafe at, down at iStar Zone in ah, Sydney. Yeah, iStar Zone. And we were playing, and the tournament organisers were going to rig it so that Razor and myself did not have to play, and we automatically qualified. <laughs> and I <laughs> thought that was so abusive yeah. and wrong. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, no, we're going to play. Yeah. They're like, but you might lose. You might lose. I was like, come on, we're, we're clearly the best in Australia. We've been practicing so hard. We've got to be fired. Yeah. I got cheese rushed and I lost my first game. <laughs> and then I got DT rushed and I was almost out straight away. Yeah. And I, I hit an island base. I had one Reaver just going around the map, killing everything. And I went one base carrier. And <laughs> I... I that uh, managed to allow me to go back through and uh, win the Australian tournament. What? One so base carrier got you back into it? One base carrier. That's all you needed back in the day. That's crazy. That's amazing. So it was just the worst start to a tournament yeah. that I think I've ever had. And yeah. just very luckily, just <laughs> very luckily held on. Oh, that's crazy. But uh, international-wise... Um, Definitely not Italy because that was Monza. Terrible, that was terrible. Pretty one. crap. That was pretty. That was not no. a nice place. I, I didn't mind going around the Ferrari track there. So that was that was cool. The Formula One track, I should say. Yeah. So it was, it was a nice venue, but I had not played in a long time because I was back at Union at that point, mm. and uh, I got destroyed. I forgot people rush when they think they're going to lose. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh. Ah, look at our observer, <laughs> forgetting to go into the game again. Well, in the bottom right we have Seether with his two refineries. Yeah, he's in the loser position because uh, bottom right has lost two games in a row now. Yeah. And that's, that's wow, you found the pattern. Yep, yep. So Hut's got this. Yep, and yeah, Hut in the top left. Both doing uh, the same opening this last game. D double gas. Double gas. Double gas all the way. And, yep, both straight into factories. I wonder if we're going to see a similar sort of style this game, where it's marine tank. I think the shot is probably going to another cheese like he did last time. Yeah, it really didn't... just really didn't play out the way it should have after the fact. You know? To me, this is a much better map for what he did last game, because mm. it's got two entrances, so when you do the suicide charge up the ramp, you've got a much better chance that he doesn't have everything just sitting there. Yep. And, y I mean, you can always scan before you go up there as well, right? Like, you you don't have to, as Terran, yeah. fully commit up a ramp if you don't want to. That's right, right. Bad of it. Energy. Okay. Oh. So, starport for Hut. Nothing to see there. He's going past the man again. Sneaky SCV again. Do you think we're seeing the same thing? I no, don't think so. got it back in his face. I don't think so. Did see the go quick command center in the first game as well? Yeah, I believe so. It's so it's been three games in a row. Yeah. I think it's a pretty standard sort of um, opening for the Terrans. It's always safe. Worst yeah. case, you can lift off and fly back in your base. As long as you got a couple of Reapers and a Hellion early, like, you don't normally get cheesed out. Still no command. Quick Raven. So is... What was that? I think it was... was um, Huts? Yeah, that was Huts. So you, you can like time it so like before it mines once more, it'll leave and die before it takes the minerals because it won't make the journey back. So you move it away so you don't waste the minerals. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Min-maxing to the extreme. I'm not sure. Does that only happen when you do the further away minerals or? I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure how it works. Um... But I have been seeing it before, for a while. Another quick stem. So Hut committing to the t uh, to the Marines once more. A lot of Hellions coming. Yeah, I don't think these five Hellions can do the trick, but we'll see. 
He gets a good, good angle on these guys, maybe. He's looking for it, but... Did an okay trade. There's the, the damage completed. Units lost. So yeah. three Hellions for one Hellion and two Reapers. So some torrents in the main. Dark. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't move that uh, Cyclone. I thought we could have killed that Raven. A little bit of time. More Hellions going down as well. Definitely trying to put on the pressure, but he's been shut down so far. Yeah, and look at the supply count now. It's already down. A good 20%. The worker difference is going to keep ballooning out. I think Sealer's in a good spot. So far, so good. He's playing very solid after that uh, that first loss. Now Hut, he's going to have to play catch up. You know, he's just he's still making his natural. It's going to be three Ravens, so he's just going to keep plopping down. All the talents I'm presuming. Yeah, just some turret spam once again. Yeah, good harassment. And yeah. Good defensively. If you can get it down if they don't put any defense, they can take out a lot. So, how about you? Favorite WCG? Hmm. Favorite WCG. There was a few good ones. One of the one of my favorites might be my first one where it was in San Francisco 2004 I believe it was um, got to travel with the whole Australian team you were part of that Australian I team was, yes. even uh, the second place Warcraft 3 player Philbot went back in the day ah oh, man crazy times locally that same tournament uh, the Brisbane side of things was my favorite because I got to defeat Philbot in the finals and he was such a <laughs> bitter rival back then and we were just two kids that would talk a lot of trash online. And when it finally came to it, we finally met in the finals. I 2 0 him in the most convincing tour I've ever had. Like it was just like perfect play. I could see between, I could see the code in my eyes and I was just like, this is what I have to do when. And at least for the second game, first game went for a while, but it was like really convincing. And he was like, you know, he was in mouse, he was a good gamer essentially, mm -hmm. like, he was what you aspired to be? Kind of? Yeah. Yeah, he was doing really well for himself. And he had his own niche sort of style. Yeah, we hated each other. We hated each other in a, in a weird way. It was crazy. And I won. And then he's I, he's then probably I sh listening to this and going Maybe? like... Big <laughs> 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 uh, push here. Big yeah, push. Just from the turrets? Yeah. That's a little surprising. I would have thought he would have kept pushing there, but... I don't know. They do a lot of damage. That's the... I think that's the bottom line for that. And maybe he didn't so you believe... Just make them waste the energy and try and push again? Yeah, or sort of bait it out. Or well, maybe he's discontent because he's got his third. Yeah, he oh, just needs to so chip away. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know, the damage has been done here. Yep. Wasted all your energy, created out a lot of marines. Um, I'm already up a base, I can see for a fact that you're in the two. Is that, uh, does Hut have a third just above the natural? I think yeah. he's got, yeah. He's building there. Yeah, still a while away. I mean, once again, we're seeing a third up and running to see that, so he is just snowballing at this rate. Getting further and further ahead, and it's going to be up to Hut to make it, sort of, put this to a stop, do some damage, kind of reel it back in, because he is on the back foot. I can see the yep, I think we're gonna see. Oh, anyway, yep, I think we're gonna see similar. But might be a push for this time. Does any good pop on me? Something to start. Not here. Not here. Well, he's really fully really committed. Takes it back in mind. I think he does not have a might be enough. Anyway, that could just that could be it. To us. Back is broken. Down 30 supply, down a base. Is he just going to push into the natural or is he going to ensure he doesn't get his third up? Mm -hmm. Just camp it. Set up shop. I think the the safer play by C is, is probably been the best choice yeah. in these games. He 
I think he just identified that he is, you know, probably the better macro player, better sort of mechanical player, and I completely, completely agree with that. He's um, shown it time and time again that, you know what, if I sit back, play it safe, don't fall into the trap, um, don't fall into Hut's traps of, you know, sneaky sort of cheese play or proxies or whatnot, he'll pull ahead in just a matter of time. There's no losers bracket in this either, either, is there? I wish there was. Otherwise, I'd be <laughs> out there playing right now, Legionnaire. I thought they might have it for the top, <laughs> top four or, or something. Well, it, I mean, it's it's already it's already four o'clock, so and we still got three more best of threes after this, mm -hmm. so it's it's gonna go for a while. And I'm already thinking about green fried chicken. See, there are no rush. To, to end this, you know, he's just gonna sit back. He's got another 50 supply to go. Yeah. He's in, he's in no, no hurry here. He's got whatever those aerial tower things are called, so he's got uh, full vision of any attacks. Ah, uh, yes, the sensor towers. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they are so good. And yeah, he'll see anything coming a mile away with that. Third base finally up for HUD, but HUD. Down 40 supply. See if he's going in for the kill. He's just going to push and then come back or again until he's maxed. Or I think if he can find the, the place to, uh, to park, he'll be ready. So you just push up, scan, and then make your choice. Yep. Push up, scan, siege up or on siege, forwards or back. It's all about that. So it's like, okay, I've seen your army. It's puny. Uh, I have... As many tanks, but like 10 points in that range. Ooh. That's big. Got one through, but... That's really big. Let's see what these tanks are for HUD. Not in my ideal position in case those tanks want to siege behind them. Oh, that's good. Oh. Oh. Marines being kicked off. Let's see the... See the though, not taking advantage of the fact that you can just siege up behind that middle patch. Held up by the, the multitasking at the moment. But it gave uh, HUD a bit of time to. We are seeing a lot of, uh, lot of scans, a lot of stealing out here. Big, big stim and run here. Looking to try and catch this army out. It's an ambitious play. Ambitious play uh, by HUD.